great feasts of the church year. And as we celebrate this feast, let's remember, as I said at the beginning of the liturgy, that, well, there's birth and there's death, and everything in between is what God wants to make use of for the transformation of this world. Now, it's an interesting thing. A number of years ago, when I served as priest at St. James Cathedral in downtown Chicago, I preached a three-point sermon on All Saints Sunday. And I found it really funny. For the next couple of years after that, people kept coming up to me and saying, You know, Peter, I remember what you said on All Saints Sunday. It was this, this, and this. And I thought, well, that's pretty good if you actually remember that. So I actually thought I'd recycle that sermon. I was at another community, a community of seniors that I would visit month to month um, in the Lincoln Park neighborhood. And I used the same three points for my All Saints Day sermon with them. And then for the next couple years after that, they said, you know, Peter, I remember what you said on All Saints Sunday. It was this, this, and this. So I'm going to try it a third time. We'll see what happens. We'll see if you remember these three things. Because to me, when I think about the life of every saint, there are three qualities every saint of the Christian church has expressed. Every Christian saint is available, authentic, and always aims for the essentials. Every Christian saint is available, authentic, and aims for the essentials. What do I mean by available? Well, you know what available means when you come up to someone and you say, I need some help. I need to talk. My heart's heavy. And when that person says, well, I've got some time, let's figure it out. I'll listen. I'll be with you. That's simple availability. If you've ever been on the receiving end of something like that and someone says, I don't have the time. Some other time. Forget it. Now, maybe they really are rushed, but those moments of availability are those things which you carry with you, I think, through the rest of your days. When you really needed it, and someone was available to you, you won't forget. So availability is one of those powerful qualities of every saint. And have you noticed that Jesus never says in the Gospels, I don't have time. People come up to him out of the crowds. People hunt him down from one part of the countryside to the next. And they ask him for help, for healing, for transformation, for a word of wisdom. And somehow, the man can't get away. He is continually available to these people who come to him. So availability, apart from being a decent human value, reflects something that Jesus himself did 24-7. When I think about the ministry of any church, and the ministry that I hope for this church, some of you have heard me say many times before, I hope this church, this congregation here in Logan Square, is a servant church. Well, if you're a servant church, you're available. You are as open and accessible as possible to those in need. That's what a servant church does. And in fact, people who are servants are indeed available. And as we've been hearing the text of Mark's gospel in the last seven or eight weeks, church, you know, when Jesus says, look to me as I walk toward the cross and become like servants. Those who are first, you're going to be last. Those who are last, wow, you're going to be first. And so in that kind of an upside-down world, as Jesus takes his followers toward the cross and then toward mysterious resurrection, Jesus is asking them to be available all the time, just as he is available to them. So that is the first thing I can imagine every saint possesses is this wonderful grace of availability. The second thing after availability is authenticity. No saint has ever put on an act. No saint has ever had a facade that you have to get through. Saints don't live lives of deception. Saints don't have 
an attitude that people must push through to get to the real person inside. Their authenticity glows. So it is again with Jesus. You never have an instance of Jesus lying to people. I can't imagine what we would be putting our trust in if Jesus said, well, I think I'm telling you the truth, but maybe not. Wink. <laughs> so Jesus is immediately authentic. And in fact, that is what people trust him to be as they encounter him there to heal, to embrace, to raise the dead. Wow, there's some authenticity for you. Who is that if he raises the dead? Brings forth life out of annihilation. If there's any authenticity to be had, it's that kind. Not just honesty, not just candor, but a kind of presence which cuts through everything that does not matter and brings us to those most central questions of life and death. And there we are when we say that the Christian saint is not only available and authentic, but also aims for the essentials. We're going to celebrate baptisms today. As we celebrate baptisms, we are going to speak together, proclaim together the baptismal covenant. And this baptismal covenant, which is in its own wonderful way expressed in the tradition of the Episcopal Church, reveals that when God wants to save, he asks you to put his trust in him. And when he asks you to put your trust in him, he's going to ask it to you in very basic ways. And you'll hear those questions asked of parents and godparents by members of this community in a short while. You're going to hear the responses that all of you get to make in the life of faith when you proclaim again the words of the Apostles' Creed and those questions which I like to call the job description of every Christian. When in doubt, look at that baptismal covenant. What you need to do and who you need to be as a Christian in this world, it's all there. If every Christian started the day by reading that baptismal covenant, I can only imagine what power the church would have on a daily basis. So, friends, we celebrate today saints who have gone on into resurrection life, we celebrate the saints that we are, indeed, holy ones of God in a broken and sad world. And yes, we are going to celebrate saints, little saints, the making of saints, because that is what the church does. It proclaims and transforms the power and wonder of God that he places within our very bodies and beings. And again and again, two more little lifetimes will be called to be available and authentic and aim for the essentials of the gospel every day of their lives. Can the church say amen? Amen. 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 All right, I invite you all to